Yo, what is going on guys? It is your boy Sister here bringing us a video here today, bringing you guys a Photoshop slash After Effects tutorial on how to create your own very cool, clean, subtle, very just like, just like clean, sleek kind of uh, overlay. So uh, the last time I did an overlay, I did it in this sort of style, I would say. Um, there's nothing like truly different besides maybe a, a few little tweaks to enhance, I guess, the quality itself. Um, besides that, it's just like fairly the, the same one, but I didn't animate it. Um, but when I feel like I look at these kind of headers, I feel like they don't really need this flashy, crazy animation like we did before, where the only animated thing we'd done for overlays at least was the electric kind of stuff um, so this is more kind of subtle really cool so hopefully at this moment in time when I'm talking uh, so that's a reminder <laughs> uh, make sure you kind of put like a I, I have the overlay up right now hopefully um, if I don't I'm an idiot oh well you're just kind of just looking at this like no um, anyway so yeah with that being said it's gonna start off inside Photoshop show you guys how to make the very cool uh, at least how to make the camera at least um, the overlay excuse me and then we'll move it into after effects show you guys a very very simple very cool thing just using like light sweeps um and yeah it's just gonna look cool and really just simple and just use a 3d well, you'll see you'll, you'll know um but yeah so of course don't like on the video because it's super down below so make sure you guys hit that like button we, bro last video we hit like what 400 likes that was kind of insane um we're at like two, like what is going i have no idea what's going on but <laughs> our numbers are so great i just want to say thank you guys very much before i you know move on to the next clip and uh yeah let's just get this thing going also you like the shirt right i, I think i wore it before right i did uh, all right let's go let's get this thing going all right, guys, so we're inside Photoshop, and this is basically how it is, right? Just so I want to show you guys really quickly how many layers are kind of going into this. Um, it's actually not too many, but I would say I, it's what are you doing on overlay, excuse me, at least like this? Um, excuse me, you're only going to find something different that you can do. It's always not going to be really the same. I mean, you can see and sort of if you want to replicate something like this, of course, go ahead and do your, you know, do your thing and whatnot. But when a sense when it, I guess the creativity, excuse me, the creativity from the overlay itself kind of just comes from you just free forming, free pen tooling, these fun little sort of like, um, kind of like these little rectangles, you know, indenting in some spots here, adding on the outside very like minimally if you want to keep it minimalistic, of course, which is the, our style that we're going for at least, and then adding some vents. So it's not, don't think of it too much as like this link, don't, don't, don't like link it all together, like break it down. And you guys can see it's a very, very simple sort of main box here, um, like this right here, main box, right? Then you have these little things on the outsides here, right? And then you have these little thing on this, this little, this little piece right here as well, hanging out. And these are just little indentions. And then this main box down here is just simply what it is, right? So it's not too difficult. So I'm gonna show you guys at least how to make this first main camera part. I'm gonna just keep it through the main camera and then this little orange piece here is because this just doing the bottom piece here. I didn't really do anything with the animation, so it's not gonna be like too worthy of, of doing it over again. Um it also speed the process up. So let's go and get this thing going. I'm gonna lock this up really quick. And I'm gonna show you guys how I did this. So basically, if I go to my little uh, my shapes here, I don't, I'm not meaning my marquee tool, by the way. I mean my shapes tab right here, right? You have the rectangle tool. So if you guys wanna throw this on, I'm gonna just simply what I used to do before. I'll do it again. Why not? So what I did was originally I already have this box here, so I, I would use the box for me to do it again. But just so you can so, to know, excuse me, at least what um, size you're going for. Now your cam boxes are probably always different. If you're doing if you're on, if you're your own streamer and you have a different camera size, of course, just take maybe a screenshot of your your stream. Put it inside. So I hit my mic. Um, put it inside the actual document page here, like a simple 19, uh, 1920 by 1080 p uh, document page, and then kind of figure out like how big your your camera actually is. If you're using like a not you know normal 1080p sort of like dimension screen, which is something like this. Um, for the record, by the way, guys, I'm on file new. Um, I'm uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution 300. Uh, you can use 72. It's perfectly fine. Um, and then yeah, 1080, uh, 1920 by 1080. Just very very simple sort of like the main screen kind of thing, right? The the basic, right? So what I ended up doing is I just quick fill this in with white, right? You can use any you know color if you guys wish to. Just like press Alt Backspace, whatever color fills in, that's perfectly fine. What I ended up doing was pressing Control T, right? And I held Alt and Shift on the corner here. So Control T was a free transform, as you can see these little uh, things right here. And then you hold Alt and Shift and you just shrink it down. So this is how I made the, at least the mock box to so say, hey, this is how big it needs to be. So that way, when I go ahead and take my rectangle, I then kind of just outline it and do it over, right? So it's it's the most accurate in my personal way to kind of make sure you at least get it somewhat um, perfectly accurate. So this works for me. Um, <laughs> so without just doing that again, I'm just gonna use, like I said, my overlay box because I know that's what I wanna, you know, have the size be. So I'm gonna take my rectangle and then I'll say right about here. And I think that is where it needs to be. Cool. So right in here, uh, when you have your, oh, excuse me, voice crack, holy shit. Uh, when you have your rectangle, basically your fill needs to be turned off. If it's not already turned off, you'll notice that your, your screen's gonna be of different 
um, your, excuse me, your rectangle is going to be a different color, or maybe it's going to be a, a color period. You don't want any color. So basically, it's like just like Illustrator, where you have on the top fill and a stroke. So the way to turn off your fill, which is you don't need right now, is this little white box with a red slash behind it. You simply just click on that. It says no color. And then, you know, there's no more color. Now, if your stroke is not on, just simply turn it on by just picking any color. I'm just going to pick a black. But for this instance here, it doesn't, doesn't matter. No, because we're using a gradient. So it doesn't really matter. So I'll make it red for you guys so you can see, or yellow so you guys can see it. Okay, so you can see this little yellow, um, let's move off, let's click off this really quick. So you can see the little yellow uh, stroke here now. What you can do is you want to go to your little path right here. I'm going to put it to about 15 maybe. That's a little bit too much. So I'm going to try to get the same exact stroke size that I had before. It seems like it was nine. Okay, so I had nine stroke size. So this little uh, box right here is where your points, the, the amount of, I guess, your stroke distance here. Um, also, for any case, if you guys wanted to know, you guys can also change your alignment. So if you don't want it to be um, on the inside, you can have, you know change your alignment here. So if you want to be in the middle or if you want to be on the outside, that's how you do it. But basically, it's not too difficult. Um, so not too, uh, you know, too important. You can keep it on the inside. But I only want to show you guys this because if you guys want to make triple layers and whatnot, putting one on the inside first, and then if you wanted to, you make a duplicate, and then you can put one on the outside, right? And this is like a fun little style that you can go for and do something different with a different color. You know what I mean? So that would be kind of cool if you guys would just want to know how to do that. Um, so now that's pretty much done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in the gradient that I had before. So I need to make sure I find the correct one. I have a style already for it, and I believe it was this one here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this off for a second now, just so you can know the gradient because I'm just gonna end up making new layers below this layer that I'm just created right now, and then kind of combining it all together later on, and then, you know, using the same as that gradient. So I just wanna get the gradient out the way so that you guys can save it, right? <clears throat> so the gradient that I use is inner glow. Now, the reason I put inner glow is you can see it almost kind of sharpens our corners out a little bit more. So you can see if I turn it on and off, it kind of, it just kind of sharpens it out, kind of like really directly says like, this is definitely, you know, the frame. Um, so the linear dodge, uh, add is our blend mode, so it's not on normal. Uh, the opacity, for the sake of OCD, let's put on 30%. Um, choke size 0, and then your size is just simply 1, and then nothing around changes. And then your next thing is satin. The satin here is almost like putting on a sort of like like a, a, a shadow lining. Um, I ended up using this a couple times in the past, just because I feel like it gives this really cool premium kind of... I don't know, it almost feels like a, a weird texture to it. I have no idea exactly why I do it, but I did do it. And the blend mode is on multiply. And if you guys want to choose the same color if you guys want to, I did have a, a blue hue for the gradient itself, um, or a, a blue tint, I would say. So they end up using a color picker, uh, hex code 18395D. I'm going to press OK on that. And the opacity, it will just say for the sake of OCD, we'll put it at 10. And the distance, uh, 12. And then your size, 32 for the satin. So, for the oh, uh, gradient overlay here, this is the main part here. This is basically the color of your actual um, your overlay itself, right? So, this here, uh, for the left-hand side, the hex code is 101419. On the right-hand side, this hex code is 1E2128. So, these are kind of like these really nice blue hues. It's not pure black. If you guys want to see pure black, that is what pure black looks like. Um, I personally like to use this just because it kind of, I, I guess it kind of fills in more of a uh, aesthetic look to it. Um, and for the sake of just saying, if you guys want to make like a reddish hue or a purple hue or a pink hue, maybe even changing the hue out would work out, or just the hue table, excuse me, uh, would work out for you guys. But for the sake of whatever, I'm just going to keep it the way I have it here. It's not red, by the way. It's just a little bit of a Photoshop glitch, you can see. Um, so yeah, that is our gradients. Um, that is our layer style that I have already, you know, kind of put in for us. So, <clears throat> so, so how do you do all this kind of fun stuff here? Right? This little, you know, little box here and stuff like that. It's very, very simple. So... When you actually go inside your document page, what you want to end up doing is you want to place, and the reason why I also did say, when you make that little, you know, that white box, uh, what, new layer, yeah. When you make that white box and you you hold Alt and Shift and you make sure you keep it in the middle. The reason why I did that is because that was, that was just to make sure that you guys keep the actual um, rectangle that you create in the middle. So that way you guys can use the rectangle, uh, the rulers here. So I'm going to get rid of this one really quickly and show you guys how to put it in. Very simply, you press Control R on your keyboard, or go to Windows, uh, Rulers, View, it's View, Rulers, sorry. Um, right, when you have your ruler set up, excuse me, I'm gonna drag this around where, that middle, uh, where the middle is kind of, you know, what you would guess the middle is. And you kind of see, if you kind of go super slow, you'll feel this little snap. You see this big jump in the inches here? <laughs> that, to me, is saying, hey, that is the middle, that is where you want to let go, and that's where your rule is going to show up. So if you want them to pretty much come in and out of frame, you simply just press Control h That'll hide the stuff. It'll also hide your paths, too. So if you're pen tooling, by the way, 
and you say, hey, I, I need to move my rulers out the way, if you press Control H, it will also hide your path, so make sure you're not, uh, you hide your rules before you pen tool, okay? Um, with that being said, though, so, oops, I didn't mean to delete that, there we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a layer below this rectangle layer, so this is our main box, main box. It'll also, like I said, you'll see in a second. Um, we're gonna make a new layer below that, right? So this is where you would wanna say this ruler, this middle ruler, is where you wanna make sure you do all of your little uh, edits and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, I'm gonna click all the way over here. Then I'm gonna hold shift to make these little very simple. If you guys hold shift while you're pen tooling, you can either go, you know, straight up, straight left, you know, up and down if you need to. But also if you click on a certain angle, like a, a very slight angle, you're not, of course, you know, perfectly, you know, straight ahead, perfectly straight, uh, straight up, excuse me. If you go on a, a little bit of an angle, you get this perfect, uh, what is it, 45 degree angle. So basically, when you're holding shift and you make these little fun little, uh, you know, little indentions here, you can go ahead and kind of just, you know, have a little fun with it. So I'm going to say, hey, there's that. If I want to move it over, I'm holding control, hover over, as you can see. And then I can just hold control again and move the, the, the pen tools freely. So I'm going to say that's pretty good. And the reason why I went to the middle and I went all the way back down to the middle and I also started in the middle was to make sure that when I go ahead and fill this in with any color, I'm going to fill it in with any color. It doesn't really matter right now because we're, we're going to group it back together with this main box in a second. So now what I can do is you can hold alt shift drag it over or it's another way of duplicating is control j right but i like to hold alt and shift and just drag it over personally it's a very nice quick little shortcut to learn <clears throat> we press control t and we're going to right click we're going to go ahead and flip horizontal and you can see this little line here this is exactly where you can line this up with the ruler so if you just want to simply just take this line up the ruler press enter and that's basically where it would be right so that's it's almost like perfectly matching up your uh your rulers and all that cool stuff so i'm gonna make sure this is kind of like the same distance um the other one's a little bit more higher up and a little bit further that way that's perfectly fine though that's that's okay so don't think about it too much this is going to be the same color as this right here but i'm just making sure you guys can at least see it and this is also what you should do as well it doesn't matter when you group it all together i would just say you know kind of make sure you got to understand and get what's going on at least um so i'm gonna move this box over actually because it'll make it a lot more easier for us to keep looking back and forth uh, what i'll do is i'll also make a duplicate of it and i'll just go ahead and control e right and i'll just kind of make it smaller and put it on the inside like we did before Okay, that's a lot, a lot easier for us to look at. Okay, so this little bottom part here, I also do have another one there. So what you can do, of course, bring back the rulers. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of group these together and just call this the top middle. <laughs> for now, I'm gonna merge that together in a second as well. So I'm gonna make a new layer and we're gonna simply go ahead and do the same thing on the on the bottom here though. I'm gonna do the this nice little simple kind of cut just like this, go back to the middle. We're gonna go ahead and fill this in all right, that didn't mean to do all that. And then I'll drag that over, put that in the middle with the control T, line it up with the line, and then I have a little bottom line there too. So that's basically that first entire part um, without even having this, 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 this bar right here. So basically now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to do a lot of the top is, I'll do the top as well. Oh, we'll skip the top. We're going to skip the top. You guys understand by now at least um, kind of how to do this little indentation stuff. The same thing is happening on top as well here. So what I'm gonna do really quickly as well is cut this out of the main box. You see how this little this little cut is happening here? That's just cut out through the main box. So the way I actually ended up doing that was I'm gonna go ahead and just um, okay throw on the layer mask, right? So this layer mask ended up. Uh, if you guys know how to use layer mask and whatnot, if you use a black brush, right, you can see that it erases things. So very simply, if you want to use a white brush to fill it back in, that's exactly how it happened, right? Just like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna make a pen tool. Right, so we're gonna go ahead and make a new layer really quickly. And we're just gonna go ahead and start the pen tool exactly where this corner ends, or excuse me, starts, right? And you see, I'm gonna go a little bit far, uh, farther down. I'm gonna say around, maybe around uh, here is pretty good, right? And then once I get to around here, I'm gonna go about halfway inside. So I'm holding shift, by the way, again. So make sure I get those always those perfect diagonals. And then once you click on that middle, almost near the middle, I would say this is okay, it's fine. Um, actually, there we go, a little bit better. So now I'm gonna go to the middle of the horizontal line. So of course you have your middle line, by the way, with your ruler, do the same exact thing that you guys did before. You'll find that little snap, do the same exact thing for the horizontal line so you can know where the horizontal middle is as well. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold shift, click on this horizontal line, then I'm gonna click over, I can click over a little more, it doesn't really matter, it has to be perfectly there on the, on the coming back part. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say, there we go. Right, so the reason why I'm doing this is I'm gonna fill this layer in, and we're gonna use this layer here as like a, almost like a little of a, how do you say, a, um, like a cutout piece. You know what I mean? It's just gonna be the piece that kind of helps us cut things out, right? 
just gonna make it red so you guys can see or pink that's perfectly fine right so it's always gonna be easy to line up because the middle or excuse me this line here is the same exact place where this uh ends here so you're always gonna know so what you're gonna end up doing is you can hold control on the thumbnail uh, excuse me you hold control and you select the thumbnail of this little uh template layer this little template layer right so you hold control you click on that as you can see it creates a marquee selection here for you guys so you can go back to the main box right uh why is my main box hammer it's a race hold on i, I want to make sure you see you see this little black spot there that's because something says it's a race so i'm gonna make sure I, that's not there so control click on the template right you go back to the main box here you click on the actual layer mask and you simply just press uh, control backspace control backspace quick fills in your foreground color um, or your back in color I'm not sure I think it's the black that has to get filled in right nope it's white it's white that erases so holding holding control backspace is the quick fill to quick fill this in right here this white so you're probably saying to yourself how did you change your colors really quickly when you select on the thumbnails here your colors automatically change so this obviously is a little bit awkward because I already had a black and white set but if you had like red purple set or whatever once you click on this thumbnail it'll automatically change your foreground to white and automatically change your background to black so um you don't have to worry about moving your messing up your colors or anything like that so there's that so you're saying Cecil, how do you do the other parts you simply just simply uh we're gonna take this you simply just simply you just flip this vertical right line that up with the middle here just like so right oops all right whoops i didn't mean to i press uh, control backspace so you control t okay then you right click flip vertical excuse me uh yeah you click uh select click vertical am i no it's horizontal sorry i always does anyone else ever have <laughs> i keep for some reason i keep forgetting um i had it right the first time okay it's definitely flipping vertical i'm just a bit of an idiot okay jeez there we go you flip vertical <laughs> i'm totally leaving this in here you see this all right, I just want to flip it vertical, okay? So that way it's on the top now. So I can put move it down here, line it up with that middle line, okay? You hold control, you select the thumbnail, you select this little box here, the uh, the marquee tool of it, and then you press control backspace, just like so. And that'll make a nice little indention for you guys. And what you end up doing is doing on the same exact side over here. I'm gonna just do this really quickly for you guys. And uh, I'm gonna flip it horizontal, right? And then I'm gonna go here, line that up there. And then do this control backspace I'm clicking a full time uh, I did it I just I didn't hide the layer um, and then over here then you flip it vertical and then you line it up ta da just like so it's lined up control click on there click here and there you go all right sweet so now we have our indentions okay so <laughs> in my uh, personal one I don't know if you can see but for the whole animation for that little side piece to kind of go through there's actually a black line here so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer blow everything again uh, what is this stuff we want to make sure we name this kind of stuff for we don't get messy bottom we'll call this bottom bar and then that's the overlay box that's fine this is our new layer okay uh okay so new layer here i'm just gonna simply take a marquee tool right i'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of select just one pixel away from the outside there and we're gonna quick fill this in with any color for now but i'm gonna just show you guys we're gonna make this pure black so control u if you want to bring up this table on this layer or if you wanted to of course fill this in with black you could have done that as well like you could have like right clicked black uh fill with black if you guys wanted to do that as well but i just kind of like sometimes doing it the, this the way that i like it i don't know if you guys can tell but this is black but you can't see it so just know there's a black bar right here i'll keep this uh we'll, i'll keep this like a bluish tone so that way you can at least still see there we go but there's a black going on right there um, now all of our, you know, assets going to look really weird. Um, so simply, I'm just going to drag this black bar over. But just so you guys know it's there, I'm going to change it back to black because I feel like it's a little hard to see sometimes when you just have a black thing. Um, a black background. Okay, so now we have those little black bars there. You can see how nice and clean it's coming out and looking. I'm going to change it back to black though. Um, just like so. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is the final piece here is just going to be like this sidebar here just so I can kind of kind of move through. And also this right here. And also the damn circle. The circle is kind of important, right? Um, okay, so make a new layer. Excuse me. Let's call this the, the bars. Do I want to do this? No, I want to keep these separate. I want to keep the bars separate. So I want to call this one the can't see what it is because I can't see it. And this one is the left. Okay, gotcha. So this is the left bar. And this is the right bar uh just like so okay cool now i'm gonna do is this little parts right here so very simply as you guys would probably guess you hold shift go on an angle click down click over 
and then tada so this is going to be uh we'll make this any color for now then you just drag it over flip it horizontal or vertical right yep vertical and then you have that piece there then you can combine these two together right and then we're just going to take a, a gradient here and i believe the gradient that i used was saved right here so the orange that i use you can change the colors up the hue if you want to change the color keep the 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 hex code the same just move around the hue if you want to change the color for now i'm going to give you this really really nice tone um so the hex code for the left hand side is c eight three five zero e on the right hand side this is really really nice sort of like burgundy um and this color is hex code six nine zero 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 okay so press okay press okay again and then simply what we're gonna do <coughs> excuse me is just drag this over flip it horizontal put it back where it needs to be and i believe it's one in right yes one in okay cool that's perfect and then the last part is uh, i'm gonna actually group this together now see this stuff here and this stuff here before i group it together i'm just gonna make sure i copy this um we're gonna copy this layer style right and then we're gonna say all these things we're gonna group it together so as you can see what i ended up doing was click on the main box hold control click in the top middle click in the bottom bar right Control E to merge that all together. Or if you really want to, to keep it, if you ever want to edit it, I would actually do this instead. Convert it to a smart object and then right click, uh, paste that layer style on it, okay? So that way, if you ever want to go back into it and mess around with it, you can just say, hey, the smart object is still here and it'll give you all those layers back if you want to edit things, okay? Key, I almost forgot to do that. Um, guess what I actually did with the original. Um, so now you're probably saying, hey, how do you do this part here? I'm gonna do this very, very quickly. I'm also gonna add this stuff on the bottom here as well. Uh, we're gonna call this left, left orange. I want to name, I want to name this the same as I think as before, because I want to use my other one. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna make sure that it's nothing. Nothing's gonna be different for you guys besides the design. All the names and stuff are gonna be the same. So I'm gonna leave the bottom piece. Ah, uh, you guys just probably understand how I did that. Click in the middle, do something like this. Hold shift. Click in the middle here, right, and then right click fill. Sorry, I'm just checking the time. Uh, fill with any color. Press OK. Press OK again right and then you can do the same thing Control t flip it horizontal put it in the middle just like so and then you probably guessed it you guys can go ahead can, you can actually merge this together merge this together then i'm gonna double click on this gradient overlay and then ta-da we got a little orange bar move it up a little bit more just kind of make it a little more sleek and skinny okay and then you probably guessed how to do the circle uh we're just gonna be using a circle okay right we're gonna use this little uh, ellipse tool here and we're gonna click somewhere in the middle oops somewhere in the middle then once you click hold Control um excuse me hold alt and shift and then you can make it nice and big i would say about there it's pretty cool move it up a little bit to kind of get it a little more centered so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say this first circle you guys probably already know we're going to turn off the strokes you guys want to do this now turn on the fill we're going to throw on maybe like this here um if you guys want to, you can even throw on a bit of a, a gradient to it so if you want to throw on maybe like a like a gradient like mm, nothing too much uh uh, let's say like this one, but not blue. Maybe around here. I think I like that. Because also don't forget, it's not going to be this light tone. It's going to have a nice little indention here. So for the hex code, 0D0E11. For the right-hand right, right -hand side and the left-hand side is actually just pure black. Okay? So that's that. Nice little circle here. I put a gradient overlay on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a alt drag. Right? I'll make a duplicate of the layer. Or if you guys want to, control J. But what you want to do is you want to call this one um, circle circle right and then you know, this first this other one that we made a duplicate of we're going to call this circle stroke okay so we're going to throw the uh, circle stroke below the circle okay um turn off the gradient by the way so you can see this one right here behind it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to press u on my keyboard that brings us back to that shape tool turn off your fill turn on your stroke your stroke color you can just kind of choose um like this little top right box here and let's choose this orange or whatever color you ended up using press ok now for the stroke size i'll say like two for now but what you want to do is you want to go back to your stroke options, go to your align, and then align on the outside, which is the actual the last one here. And that is how you guys get that nice little circle with the stroke around it. And I think that does conclude. Actually, no, we got to do this little uh, indentions part here. At least this one for the inner box here. You guys probably guessed it. If you guys didn't have already, then we're not. You're not following hard enough. Okay. This is the orange bottom bar. Okay. Uh, AR. Whatever. Um. Right. Pen tool. Bring up these rulers here, click around here, I'll say, click over here. I want this to be a little higher. About there is pretty good, right? Now the, hang the angle does never have to be guessed. All you have to do is hold shift, 
Do that nice little angle there. I'm gonna go a little further down though, a little more. I so said that's pretty good. Go over, hold shift, go over again to the middle, combine it. Now for this color here, you just wanna simply just make it darker than the actual gradient. So simply, I choose this color here. Um, the hex code as actually, let me just say it really quickly. Um, it's not too, it's pretty dark. 0505505, press okay. And then you wanna fill this in and then you wanna put this above everything. I put it below it, my bad. I wanna put it below the circles at least, but above everything else, okay? Then once you have this, control T, move that over. Boom, very rinse and repeat kind of stuff here. And then last but not least, what you would wanna do is you wanna combine these two things together, right? At least, um, this is the indention stuff. So we're gonna call this indent, right? Don't, is it an E? I have no idea. It is an E, isn't it? I have no, don't, don't, my spelling? A0. Is there an A1? Is like good? A0 is just like no. Um, double click on this. Simply, inner shadow. For this here, just throw it on multiply blend mode. Black, right? Take your distance. Just make it very simple, a one distance, two size, zero choke, and then you have this very, very nice clean indention. And then guys, ta-da, all right? Took us 25 minutes to do this at least base part here. Um, but do not forget, you can go in and make the main box whatever you want. If you wanna go ahead and, you know, start always start in the middle, right? Go around it. And if you wanna start doing any like random, you know, if you wanna do, I'm gonna make it really, you know, wild or whatever, all you have to do, is fill this in after you make that one side you make the other side by just dragging it over and flipping horizontal <laughs> and then all you have to do is make sure you copy always just make sure you copy the layers out just in case if you don't have it saved but then you just take these layers right combine them all together uh with a smart object don't don't press Control e right click smart object after you combine them all together and then paste the layer style and that is how you guys can just keep adding on and adding on and adding on so with that being said though i think we are done with this um, just for the sake of knowing, when you have this on a smart object and you don't have a gradient on, since I have a gradient on again, I'm going to make another smart object, uh, convert to smart object. Why are you doing that, Seso? Because you cannot overlay a color over a, a gradient overlay. I'm going to show you guys really quick. Make a new layer, put a uh, clip mask to it. What I like to do every now and again, uh, now, and, now and again, okay, take a black soft brush and click. And as you can see, you can't, like, so you're not doing anything. That's because you can't, like I just said, color over anything with a uh, gradient overlay. So just simply make it a smart object. And it doesn't erase anything. You can just go back into it by going into the smart object, just like so. Let me make it a smart object. Let me get rid of this first. Make it a smart object now. Then I'll make a new layer. It's like saying, hey, it's a completely new layer. That way now I can go ahead and take my black and go in, kind of erase around. Not erase, excuse me. I'm kind of like putting in these little splotches of, of black. Because what I'm going to do is lower my, uh, uh, excuse me, lower my uh, overlay, which will then lower the amount of black is going on, and then erase in a couple spots. It'll just give you this really nice kind of like glossy metalish kind of tone. And this is where you guys, if you guys wanted to also, you can add in like a bit of a, um, you know, a, a pattern if you guys wanted to. If you had my pattern pack, it's only $3, by the way, right? If you want to add a pattern, which would be pretty cool. You can get this cool, like, oh, this almost looks like a carbon, kind of uh, carbon. Also, this is where your logo would go in. If you don't have a logo, maybe just make the box a little bit bigger. Doesn't have to be a circle, right? It can, it can, the stroke can still spin. Um, and just you can just kind of put a, a box at least worthy enough to fit your name in the middle without a circle um, with this tool here, right? Same exact premise or your po a polygon tool. To change the sizes as well, you know what I mean? So uh, with that being said though, I'm gonna go ahead and get this over into Photoshop. So the reason why I'm gonna make sure you guys named everything is because when you throw it into uh, uh, Illustrator, no, After Effects, uh, all, all the things are gonna be named for you guys, right? It's gonna be very easy and uh, simple to work with. Just know and note this as well, uh, smart objects are always gonna be a different composition inside After Effects, but always know the original composition is what you render out. So don't ever get worried when I'm in After Effects and you see me working in two different compositions. It's okay. Um, they're a part of the same one. So you guys wanna make sure you save this as, wherever you're gonna save it as, and we're gonna throw this inside Illustrator uh, After Effects now. Why do I keep saying that? Um, After Effects now, and just show you guys these very, very simple and clean animations. And uh, yeah, let's get this thing going. All right, guys, this is very, very easy, actually. So I'm gonna just jump into this right here, right now. So we're in After Effects. This is the newest After Effects, anyone looking. Um, at least I think it is. I don't know if this is the, is this the newest version? Cause I've, I, don't, I probably didn't update After Effects yet. Um, Cause I hardly kind of go in here right now. Um, But yeah, this should be the newest version, but it's not. Is it actually an update? Should I update this? Cause is people gonna get upset with me? That I didn't update it? I didn't. I'm not gonna update it. I'm scared. I'm scared to update. Okay, we're gonna go to file. I'm gonna keep that in there. I don't even care. Um, file, right? We're gonna get import. We're gonna import this file here, and we're just gonna simply type in what I had before, which is 2019 um, overlay PSD, right? We're gonna import that in here, 
And so we're going to import kind. This is the composition retain layer sizes. And make sure you have your layer options, uh, edible layer styles. That way, if you guys ever want to change the colors inside with a gradient overlay and stuff like that, uh, you guys can actually do that. So I'm going to double click on this right here, this 2019 overlay. Composition is the one you want to double click on. And then once you have this open, you'll see, like I said in the previous clip, that all the sworn objects that you end up putting in is going to be a different composition. So you see how I double click on this, because that this little icon here kind of says this is another composition. Also, this gray kind of tonish burgundy color also says, hey, this is another composition. So when you click on it and you open it, you're not working in two different compositions. You're working in, uh, excuse me, you are working in two different compositions, but they're linked together, okay? So don't think um, that, like, you know, any worries going to happen here. Don't worry about it. Um, also, don't worry about the fact that you can't see the previews that happen in this main composition in this second tier composition. Because understand that it's like working in two different projects, but one project is the same. Uh, you know what I mean? The same project. Hopefully that makes any sense because I just don't want you guys to worry about it because I know you guys will be like, what the hell? Um, so you're probably wondering, hey, how did you get this box here? So, so like I said before, I'm going to use my version that I had before, but the names are literally the exact same. If not, they're like so similar that you guys are like, oh, okay, the same shit. You know what I mean? So. First things first, composition settings, right? This is a one second, very, very simple one, uh, it's not one second, one minute composition. Um, width is at 1920 by 1080. So basically it's gonna just take the exact same uh, width and height sizes that you put inside Photoshop. Uh, but you're gonna kind of make sure that your duration is at one minute, right? Just very simple. And the reason why I'm using one minute, cause I'm gonna use about five to 10 seconds to be what happens. Um, with all the animations and stuff like that that way when you fully rotate it and you put it in OBS and you like then you know Have it loop and whatnot. It's only gonna be every one minute which happens only 60 times every time you you know an hour of stream So it's not too repetitive But the whole point is to be so subtle that you don't really see it every single time But when you want to see it you want to see it you know what I mean um, also keep in mind that when all the stuff I'm gonna be doing with the logo and the the, the the Stroke to spin you can also do the same exact thing as you have little icons here I don't have any icons here. It can be like a donate icon subscribe icon and those can do the same exact spinning move too. That'd be kind of cool um, Okay, so First things first. I'm gonna do the inner ring. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can see this little inner ring part. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your mode, how do you, uh, I forgot this for a second. You want to make sure that your mode here, cause not everyone's going to see this. I feel like there was something that you had to do. Um, is it this? All right. Don't worry about it too much. I just thought before, cause I don't know if everyone's going to see this automatically that this, the 3d layer box here. Um, because I, I feel like I remember in the in the preset or, or when I first did uh, After Effects, you don't see this immediately. And I feel like, uh, I don't know. I actually don't know, and I apologize. If this is not there for you, just simply just figure out how to open up the 3D layer. Uh, I just want to kind of say that, because I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if that's default there. Um, okay, anyway, so we're in a ring. You want to make sure this 3D box here is checked. So you want to click on that just like so um, for the inner ring, okay? So the 3D box is actually here. Your transform tools actually allow you to give more access than just you know the simple one rotation, right? It gives you the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis, right? So what I'm gonna end up doing is we're gonna mess around with the Y axis, which is gonna basically make it spin on an axis that is very simply gonna stick in its little circle, okay? So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to about three, four seconds here. You can see this little box right here, that's four seconds. Um, uh, hopefully I remind myself to put the damn thing up here, the, uh, the whatchamacallit webcam. So, so put the webcam top left, thank you, please. Okay, so I'm gonna do four seconds, right? As you can see, we're gonna take this Y rotation and still be keyframe this. It's already keyframe because I moved it. We're gonna make sure we move this first keyframe here. Right, we'll delete it just so you can see, right? Click on this little uh, time, little, little time spot. What is it? Stopwatch, right? This little stopwatch icon here. Uh, once you click on this, it'll add that little keyframe in. So the first keyframe should be around zero seconds, right? Or zero everything rotations. I'm going to move this about, mm, we'll say another four seconds. Oh, we'll say like five. We'll say nine seconds that we're going to go into, okay? So from three to nine seconds, around that, okay? We're going to just simply just take the rotation here. And I'm just going to type in 180. That'll give us a nice flip. Not a full rotation because that's a little bit too much in my opinion. A nice flip here. And that way, it'll look pretty good, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just click off really quickly. I'm gonna show you guys. So it's gonna do. It's gonna simply just kind of rotate on in itself. I'm also rotating the wrong thing. I'm also rotating the inner ring, not the stroke. You're probably like, Cecil, you're not rotating the stroke. Um, oof. But it's okay. I'll just do it over again. Uh, that's a that, that's a practice. Is just practice, okay? So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same exact thing, but just here. So that was the tutorial part of it, okay? So I'm gonna go stroke ring, right? Throw on the inner box here. Click on here. It's because I I, th I think I clicked on both of these and I selected this one off. Whoops. Transform. Make sure I do the stroke ring. Um, so, right, Y axis. We're going to four seconds or so. Right? Click on the Y. 
and then click about nine seconds in or three seconds ahead, right? And then we're gonna say, hey, put it at 180, press okay. So that's gonna have the inner ring, which we wanted, um, excuse me, the, the stroke ring to go ahead and rotate. But you see how we have the stroke ring in front? We wanna have that behind it. So I don't want you to see the, the whole animation part going. I kinda want it to feel like this little weird thing happening. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna take the, inner, uh, the stroke ring, throw it below the inner ring, okay? And I'll render it again so you can see now you don't really see that but then you kind of see this weird sort of loading kind of of really subtle right the whole point a very subtle ring turn so I kind of like how that is and so as you can see just kind of works looks really good and I'm gonna speed this up with these simple little uh, easy ease so really quickly if you guys ever know and you want to find your keyframes very easily you have to press this U, uh, U on your keyboard on the layer itself you can see how that works it just shows your keyframes very quickly so if you ever hide the stuff you say hey i want to go back to this stuff open my keyframes simply press the u on your keyboard and you're good to go right so i'm gonna highlight these keyframes here and we're gonna throw on easy ease if you don't know what easy ease is i talk about it all the time if you're new to animation and stuff like that it's basically how you'd find these really cool animations that kind of that kind of uh introduce uh point a to b how quickly things happen okay so i'm gonna right click on this on the keyframes once i highlight them go to keyframe assistance and go to easy ease i'm gonna be as clear as possible hopefully for you guys um throw in your graph editor here so we want to simply click on this last icon here it's called the graph editor want to select that now you want your graph to look something like this by default i know this for sure at least uh, when you right click on this make sure that you're not you're on your speed graph most times i believe your default is your value graph so to make sure your graph is the same one as mine um you want to right click and use speed graph what happens here is this graph here is indicating hey this pixels are this uh this pixel basically this keyframe here is this keyframe that's located right here right and this keyframe here is your other keyframe that you made at nine seconds right so that is exactly what these two things are i'm gonna zoom in with this little bottom piece here to see so you can see a little more easier right so this is that three second keyframe this is that nine second keyframe so what's happening here is the reason why i want to kind of like do it over again because i can see it's a very slow kind of very static movement what i want to do is kind of spice it up a little bit so i want to say hey I'm gonna move this keyframe and move this little yellow marker really far in. I'm gonna say about, uh, about um, how do you say this? Uh, I guess a, a square and a little bit more, right? So you can see this little square here. I wanna do it a square in and a little bit more, right? I'm gonna take this one here and just kind of move it about, I would say, a, we'll say about half a square in, okay? So what's gonna happen here is now, why am I making all these weird, weird noises? Uh, what's gonna happen here, it's gonna go really slow and then really quick into the final piece of the transition so it'll almost feel more animated very less static right so you can see it'll look really really nice and good for you guys um we'll do it one more time as you can see if you guys remember what it looked like before this kind of feels a little bit more sophisticated i guess you would say right so once that's done we're going to simply do the same exact thing for the actual logo itself so simply 3d box open this up you guys know this by now transform uh y access here we're not gonna keep from it yet we're gonna go into maybe about uh We'll go about 20 milliseconds. So I'm gonna say right, you see this key for me is about four seconds or so. Go a little bit ahead of it. Just very, very, like like I said, about 15, 20 milliseconds ahead of it. And this is what we're gonna do this, right? Y axis, and I wanna do this over here. And we're gonna go about, I guess, like basically, how far is this? This is literally three milliseconds before this keyframe. You don't have to be precise, just be very, just kind of like loose with it, have fun with it. You also probably notice that you probably have to make other things a little bit longer if it's too quick for you guys. Just be kind of like mindful, like at least spacing wise where I'm putting my keyframes. Um, you don't have to be exact, trust that, okay? So right here, you see this X times? What we did be uh, before here is we put a, a 180. Before that uh, is another number here, which is a zero, and the actual zero in front of this means a rotation. So if you put a one here, which I'm going to do, it's saying to the program, it's gonna rotate this on the Y axis, one full rotation. So you don't have to put, you don't have to put three, six here or anything like that. You can put a one, you can put a two if you want to be super, super fast. You can put, you know, 0.5 and it'll actually fix the actual, if you guys want to see really quickly, right? If you even put like 0.5 in here, it'll fix, this right here and say hey it needs to be 180 right if you want to put like 0.2 it'll fix and say hey it has to be 252 so if you want to be super super slow it can be like you know 252 um just keep mindful it just kind of makes everything way way more easier so now i have this full rotation thing going on here if i kind of play it through really quickly you'll see the ring kind of goes um and it kind of almost all links up with each other by the end of it right and i think that is pretty freaking cool and i think it looks really really good and that's almost the end of the tutorial almost because we have to do one more thing the whole fun part the subtle little lights on the outsides so 
I believe um, Why are my black lines not here the black bars? Oh because it's in here. We're in a different composition We gotta go back to this one here to actually add these little black bars and you see these little black bars so for the record um, if uh, I'll just show you guys really quickly when I do things inside this actual composition here, it's not going to show the preview once again, I'm going to just say it inside this if you want to go back and kind of look at it. Make sure you're always previewing for all of your stuff to be included inside this one right here. Uh, makes it way, way easier for you guys. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just mess around with the left box here. So this is actually the left, this little left piece here, or layer one for me is this little black line right here as you can see. So what I end up doing is I'm going to click on this layer here, I'm going to go into my uh, effects table here as you can see I already had it typed in effects and presets you want to type in the word light space s w e e p which happens to be light sweep so once you see this you see the uh the generate and this is what you want what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just take this drag this on top of layer one and as you can see it's gonna have a little bit of light a little of a light in here excuse me so the first thing i'm gonna do is change my color i'm gonna just change this to pure white just like so actually i'll change it to a nice little offset blue like i had before like almost like a grayish tone I think like this looks pretty good. Hex code A six B five C B. Press OK. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my direction here. I'm gonna change it to, I believe the really good one was 42. As you can see, it makes the light very very intense. So I'm gonna end up doing now is I remember before we were at three seconds we started all that stuff. I'm gonna go a little bit ahead. I'm gonna say around maybe 10 seconds. I'm gonna do this. So it's a little bit after the animation that was done before in the other version, right? Or the other uh, composition. So I'm gonna go here. I'm going to go to the center. I'm going to keyframe that. Remember, if you want to see the, uh, the keyframe under the layer, press U on the keyboard. Right, so then you see that keyframe here. It's at about 10 seconds or so. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my centering here. I'm going to bring this all the way to the top, so that way you can't see the light on the black bar. You see what's happening here? I'm dragging this second number here toward the left to go up, and it's I don't want to see this black bar, or I don't, I don't want the actual light to be on top of the black bar. <laughs> Excuse me. So once I find that little location here, I'm going to go up a little bit now. I'm going to say around maybe like four seconds. Uh, how long is this? About six seconds. I'll go about five seconds. Excuse me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My like hiccups and weird little inner burps are happening. I apologize. 14 seconds in. So about four seconds ahead or so. We're going to take this here and then just drag this the opposite way. So down. Oops. I, I pressed spacebar to, to uh, play. 14 seconds. Take this centering here. Bring this down all the way until you can't see it anymore. Okay, just like so. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what's going to happen here is when you render it out, you'll see this little uh, stuff spin first, right? Nice little clean spins. You can also add easy ease to the logo spinning as well. I probably would. I'm just going to skip that for now, but just know you probably should. And then you see this little light kind of go in and say, hey, look at me. I'm a light. Makes my overlay look cool. And I think it looks pretty, uh, pretty good. Um, just for the sake of just kind of making sure I do it. I would easy ease this with you guys, right? Easy ease. Do the same exact thing. And let's kind of just bring this in about maybe like, you know, just about a box or so. And about there, like another like half box in. Just kind of add a little more flair to your animation at least. A little more, uh, a little more, I guess the way I would, is a, like I like to use the word sophisticated. Um, okay, so once you have this one done here, this light sweep, you can actually just literally click on the word light sweep. Make sure you select it on the actual CC light sweep. Press control C. Um, I'll press it a couple times so I can make sure it's locked in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the second layer here, which is on the right hand side, and I'm just gonna literally just click on it and then press Control V. So the only thing you have to change, right? Oh wait, before you press Control V, make sure you actually start off with the other keyframe, right where the other keyframe is. That way it's linked up perfectly. Control V it now, which you'll see as I press U, you'll see that the keyframes are now all there, and it's the same exact thing. But you're gonna see if you guys don't change this, that one light is still brighter than the other light. That is simply because also with a subtle, subtle light as well, it looks really good. That's just putting on the opposite side. So as you saw before, this one is uh, 42. We're going to make this one basically the opposite of what that is on the other side, but still on the top. So about 42 on the left hand side. So you're going to see here now, now both of them are the same exact brightness, but you can also mess around with that, by the way, for you guys um, and get this really cool, more subtle and like not so intense light. Um, but yeah, that's basically the tutorial. So if I just go ahead and play it out for you guys. You have our little logo spin first uh, now and then the inner ring kind of showing this really kind of like kind of almost like a little bit of a loading kind of thing right and then you have those little lights on the side come down nice and smooth um you can also easy ease those as well as you probably would you know suggest oops excuse me 
Um, yeah, that's basically the tutorial. You can also go ahead, don't forget guys, this is super customizable. Just add some more fun little shapes on the bottom maybe. You can make the maybe the bottom kind of do the same as like light sweep thing. Um, it's really cool, it's really awesome, and I recognize that I should just probably just do this now because why not? Easy ease, take this, take these two things, a little bit in, a little bit in, and I'll just kind of make the light kind of feel a little more aesthetic, right? So I'll just do it one more time, okay? Got the, ooh, see how nice and like really, really nice that looked? And then the lights kind of, ooh, that was more like a pulsate. So you can mess around with the easy ease. That was a little bit quick, I would say, but I'll probably make it a little more longer. You can mess around with it, like I said before, just move one further in this way, move the other one further in that way, whatever, and kind of figure out what looks really, really good. But this is all rendered out now in real time. So you can see it, what it'll look like, just like so. And this part here, <laughs> nice little light suit. That is super, super cool. But before you guys render it out, make sure you render it out with getting rid of your background, also getting rid of this little delete thing because I just had that for the, you know, whatever, right? And then when you go ahead and just go ahead and just go to, go ahead and just go to <laughs> composition, you want to go to add to render queue. You want to go ahead and go to your output module and you want to save this under, I believe it's QuickTime. I believe, like I said, if someone in my other video said you can just, uh, you have to download QuickTime or something like that for you guys to have QuickTime in After Effects. But hopefully guys, you find how to make uh, your format in QuickTime. That way, when you guys go to your channels, you can choose RGB plus alpha, okay? That'll make sure that your background is transparent. You press okay, you save it where you wanna save it, you render it out, your best settings and stuff like that, it's just literally all the same. Press okay, when you render it out, you're good to go, you put it into OBS, you make sure that you choose the, the, the option of make the video loop, and then you have a really cool animated overlay for you guys, and that is it. Very long tutorial, I know, but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video here today. As always, guys, I know you guys are going to kill it and smash the like button, as always, for the animated videos. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys so very much, and I'll just talk to you guys later. Sesame HQ out. Peace. Don't forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. Peace out.